And again, welcome to our virtual class here at Disaster Readiness and Risk Reduction. For today, we will be discussing the third module of DRRR, and we will focus on the concept of vulnerability. So for this module, we will be discussing three topics. Lesson six, explain the meaning of vulnerability. Lesson seven, more vulnerable sectors of society. And the lesson eight, diagnosing vulnerabilities of different elements exposed to specific hazard. So for the first lesson, explaining the meaning of a vulnerability, we have this learning objectives. First, explain the meaning of vulnerability, capacity, and resilience within the context of disaster risk, and distinguish between physical, social, economic, and environmental factors that affect vulnerability of exposed elements and give examples. So what is vulnerability? Vulnerability is defined as the characteristics and circumstances of a community, system, or asset that make it susceptible to the damaging effects of a hazard. As indicated by United Nations International Strategy for Disaster Reduction, there are many aspects of vulnerability arising from various physical, social, economic, and environmental factors. Examples may include poor design and construction of buildings, inadequate protection of assets, lack of public information and awareness, limited official recognition of risk and preparedness measures, and disregard for wise environmental management. So here is the formula that was actually conceptualized to understand better what vulnerability is. So vulnerability is actually a combination of exposure, resistance, and resilience. We have four main types of vulnerability. We have the physical vulnerability, the social vulnerability, economic vulnerability, and environmental vulnerability. So let us discuss first the physical vulnerability. Physical vulnerability may be determined by aspects such as population density levels, remoteness of a settlement, the site, design, and materials used for critical infrastructure and for housing. So as you can see, when you say physical vulnerability, mas nagpa-focus siya sa physical aspect ng isang setting. Nandyan na yung kung gaano kadami yung population sa isang lugar. Okay? Uh, yung remoteness of a settlement, kung saan ba gawa yung mga bahay or yung mga infrastructure. So, importante yan. It will actually help us determine the physical vulnerability. We have an example here. Wooden homes are less likely to collapse in an earthquake but are more, more vulnerable to fire. So, ang ibig sabihin daw dyan, yung mga bahay na gawa sa kahoy, mas hindi sila naaapektuhan sa earthquake compared to the concrete houses. Pero, mas madali naman silang maapektuhan when it comes to fire. Mas madali silang masunog kapag may uh, my indoor fire or unexpected fire. So, totoo ba na ang mga wooden homes, eh, hindi sila ganun naaapektuhan ng lindol or ng earthquake? In general, yes. Particularly, if the wooden house has normal earthquake reinforcing. This is mostly because unlike concrete houses, you cannot break wood by shaking it. As long as it doesn't tip over or come apart, it will remain intact. Concrete houses can certainly be built to survive earthquakes, but you need a lot of reinforcing, and while they may survive, they will probably be damaged beyond repair by a big earthquake. 
The next type of vulnerability is the social vulnerability. This refers to the inability of people, organizations, and societies to withstand adverse impacts to hazards due to characteristics inherent in social interactions, institutions, and systems of cultural values. It is linked to the level of well-being of individuals, communities, and society. It includes aspects related to levels of literacy and education, the existence of peace and security, access to basic human rights, systems of good governance, social equity, positive traditional values, customs, and ideological beliefs, and overall collective organizational systems. So it means the different sectors of the society are actually included in determining the vulner social vulnerability. So we have an example here. When flooding occurs, some citizens, such as children, elderly, and persons with disability, or PWDs, may be unable to protect themselves or evacuate if necessary. So ibig sabihin, isn't it um, at the start or at the beginning of our discussion on the first lesson, we have mentioned that the children and the senior citizen, they are more vulnerable to different hazards and disasters. Sabi natin na kung may idedetermine tayong sector or age gap na most vulnerable sa different disasters, yun yung mga bata children. Why? Because they don't have enough knowledge on how to deal with these different disasters. Hindi pa sila ganun may yung kaalaman nila sa paghandle ng disaster, hindi ba ganun kalawak. So they lack knowledge. And then sa mga senior citizen naman or yung tinatawag nating elderly, though they already have the knowledge Okay, to deal with these different disasters. Ang kulang naman sa kanila yung skills. Okay, medyo nahihirapan na sila when it comes to movement. So kahit alam nila ang gagawin because of their condition, nahihirapan na silang gumalaw, okay, mas nagiging vulnerable sila sa disaster. And lastly, yung mga PWDs natin or persons with disability. So, they, they cannot protect themselves. Kung kinakailangan na mag-evacuate, nahihirapan sila. Why? Because they are still dependent on their significant others. So, educated and well-informed are more likely to survive when disaster strikes. There will be lesser casualty in communities with emergency plans backed up by emergency personnel as compared to those without. So, importante talaga na sa isang community, they already know what to do. They have emergency plans. Okay? Dapat meron na silang backup. So that kahit anumang disaster ang dumating sa community, okay, they will be well-guided already as well as the people in the community. So, the third type of vulnerability is economic vulnerability. The level of vulnerability is highly dependent upon the economic status of individuals, communities, and nations. The poor are usually more vulnerable to disasters because they lack the resources to build sturdy structures and put other engineering measures in place to protect themselves from being negatively impacted by disasters. The same people are the least prepared due to lack of access to education and information. So, when it comes to economic vulnerability, naaapektuhan ng mga disasters yung mga uh, nasa poor sector ng ating society. Okay? Why? Number one, because they are not well-educated. They are not well-informed. Lalo na kung hindi sila nakapag-aral. Right? So, sila talaga yung uh, kung, kung magkakaroon man ng different disasters, sila yung mas maaapektuhan. So we have an example where 
poorer families may live in squatter settlements because they cannot afford to live in safer areas. So, lalo na sa Manila, okay, ang, ang capital ng ating bansa, marami tayo mga uh, squatter settlements dyan. Yung mga bahay nila, dikit-dikit, okay, tapos yung materials na ginamit, okay, hindi naman ganun ka-safe din. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng, uh, kapag nagkakaroon tayo ng disaster, sila yung unang-unang naaapektuhan. For example, kapag nagkaroon ng sunog, isn't it sa mga news, yung mga naririnig natin or napapanood natin sa news, kapag nagkaroon lang ng uh, leak sa LPG sa isang bahay, okay, naaapektuhan na yung buong community. Mabilis kumalat yung apoy. Kasi nga, dun sa structure ng kanilang bahay, Okay, because they cannot afford to actually buy more expensive materials or safer materials. So in Metro Manila, the so-called urban poor build their shanties or improvised houses along riverbanks and esteros, making them prone to flash floods. So yun namang mga um, urban poor na tinatawag natin, okay, Nagbe-build sila ng mga improvised houses nila, yung mga makeshift nila, malapit sa mga riverbanks or yung mga esteros natin. And kapag nagkakaroon ng heavy rainfall, nagkakaroon ng flash flood, sila yung mas naaapektuhan. Dahil nga light materials lang gawa yung kanilang bahay, okay, madali itong matangay ng baha. So, sila, ayan, This is the reason why they are more vulnerable compared to other sectors of the society. So the light materials that build their homes make them exposed to fire hazards as well. And the last type of vulnerability is the environmental vulnerability. Natural resource depletion and resource degradation are key aspects of environmental vulnerability. This is one aspect that both communities and government must be sensitive about. For example, okay, uh, one measure or one mitigation measure na nakikita natin right now na ginagawa um, is yung tinatawag natin reforestation and the natural resource protection and conservation. So, kailangan na kailangan na talaga ito okay, to reduce the natural disaster risk and vulnerability. So, sabi, if I can still remember with your answers before, okay, isa sa mga magandang gawin, one of the ways that we need to do to actually not prevent but mitigate, lessen the effect of the disasters is through reforestation. And that is right. So, we have an example there. Wetlands such as Agus and Marsh are sensitive to increasing salinity from seawater and pollution from stormwater runoff containing agricultural chemicals, eroded soils, etc. Deforestation of mountains due to illegal lagging is the main cause of landslides and mud flows, like what happened in Ormor or Mok I'm sorry, or Mokleite in 1994 and in Infante Quezon in 2011. So those are actually the four types of vulnerability. So that's it for the uh, lesson six, the first part of our module three. Thank you very much for listening. And please okay, be updated with the next lesson that we will be discussing, the lesson seven. Thank you very much. Again, this is Mom Rachel Gail Buonasuiko, aka Mom RG. Always remember, no pandemic can stop us from learning. Bye and have a great day.